in this lecture we are going to learn different types of project appraisal method that means different types of discounted methods of project appraisal and undiscounted measures of project appraisal so in today's lecture we focuses mainly on undiscounted measures of project appraisal okay so first of all we study different types of project appraisal methods so there are major two types of project appraisal methods in that first one is undiscounted measures and second one is discounted measures of project appraisal okay so in case of undiscounted methods of project appraisal time value of money is not considered while calculation of project okay whereas in case of discounted measures of project appraisal time value of money is considered while calculation okay so under undiscounted measures of project appraisal there are major five methods in that first one is ranking by inspection payback period proceed per unit of outlay average annual proceed per rupee of outlay and average income on book value of investment these are the different methods of undiscounted measures of project appraisal under discounted measures of project appraisal in that first one that is npw or npv that is net present value then irr internal rate of return then bcr benefit cost ratio and last one that is pi profitability index okay so first of all we study in detail about project appraisal methods that is undiscounted measures of project appraisal okay so this undiscounted measures of project appraisal it is nothing but the choosing among the alternatives of the project that means in this method of project appraisal time value of money is not considered while calculation of project cost and benefit okay sometimes this undiscounted measures is misleading in ranking hence the choice go wrong that means there is sometimes chance to wrong selection of project under this undiscounted measure of project appraisal okay so this is the undiscounted measures of project appraisal that means in this method time value of money is not considered while calculation of cost and return of that particular project and this method is just choosing among the alternative project okay so under uh, undiscounted measures of project appraisal there are major five methods in that first one that is ranking by inspection proceed per rupee of sorry payback period proceed per rupee of outlay average income on book value and average annual proceed per rupee of outlay these are the different methods under undiscounted measures of project appraisal we see one by one these different methods in detail okay so first method that is ranking by inspection okay ranking by inspection that means its name indicate its meaning just give the rank on the basis of in fact uh, inspection of that particular project okay so this ranking by inspection method is basically based on size of cost and length of cash flow stream okay so basis of this method is size of cost and length of cash flow stream that means suppose there are two project having same initial investment and same net value of production but with difference in length of period then project with longer duration is preferred that of a shorter duration that means in this ranking by inspection the project having longer duration that project will be selected for further implementation okay this is the first method that is ranking by inspection okay for example suppose project a and project b are the two project and having same investment and same net value of production okay but with different length of period then project a having life period of 5 years 
while project b having the length of time of 3 years then which will be the selected for further implementation okay so project a will be selected for further implementation because the life or length of period of project a will be 5 year which is greater than project b so project a will be selected for further implementation this is the ranking by inspection method okay so in this method project will be selected on the basis of longer length of period okay then second method that is payback period okay so definition of payback period it is the length of time required to get back initial investment on project that is called as payback period okay that means how much time required to get back our initial investment in particular project that length of time is nothing but the payback period and this payback period it is the common and rough means of choosing among the investment in the business enterprise okay then under this payback period the preference of project should be based on lesser payback period that means project having lesser payback period that project will be selected for further implementation okay so for calculation of payback period formula is p is equal to i upon e where p is equal to payback period i is equal to initial investment on the project and e is equal to annual net cash return okay by using this formula we can calculate payback period okay uh, for example suppose the two project project a and project b having initial investment of 20000 rupees and get following cash flows so project a get net cash flow of rupees 5000 in each year while project b getting net cash flow of rupees 4000 per year okay so payback period can be calculated by using formula p is equal to i upon a where i is equal to initial investment it is of 20000 then e is equal to net cash return that is 5000 for project a so payback period for project a will be 4 years while in case of project b initial investment is 20000 rupees and annual net cash revenue is 4000 rupees per year okay so payback period for project b is 5 years okay so which one project will be selected for further implementation okay so which one project will be selected for further implementation yes project a will be selected for further implementation because project a having payback period of 4th year that means within a 4 year this project a will cover this initial investment of 20000 rupees okay while in case of project b it requires 5 years to cover this 20000 rupees okay that means within a short period that means less than 1 year this project a will be cover its initial investment so project a will be selected for further implementation this is the payback period okay third method that is proceed per rupee of outlay so under this method the magnitude is calculated by dividing total proceed with the total amount of investment okay so total income divided by total amount of investment we get proceed per rupee of outlay and selection of project was done on the basis of highest magnitude of this parameter that means the project which having highest magnitude of this ratio that project will be selected for further implementation this is the method that is proceed per rupee of outlay after this method next one that is average annual proceed per rupee of outlay so in this method uh, this calculation is done in two stages in that first stage that is total receipt are first divided by project life span okay first total receipt divided by project life span we get average 
annual process and this average annual proceed is again divided by initial investment we get average annual proceed per rupee of outlay okay so the calculations are done in two steps in that first one total receipt divided by project life we get annual proceed and this average annual proceed is again divided by initial investment we get average annual proceed per rupee of outlay okay then selection of project under this method the project having highest magnitude of this estimate that project will be selected for further implementation this is the next method that is average annual proceed per rupee of outlay okay after this method next one that is drawbacks of undiscounted measures okay so in case of undiscounted measures it is just choosing among the alternatives so for the same date or same date of project we get different ranking hence choice process become useless okay so in case of undiscounted measures suppose the project having same data and we get different ranking for same data hence the choice procedure become useless and ranking by this methods are inconsistent and incompatible these are the two major drawback of undiscounted methods of project appraisal okay so question may be asked on this topic in list different methods of project appraisal and explain undiscounted measures of project appraisal okay so this is all about today's lecture that is undiscounted measures of project appraisal okay thank you all